Kroisio, and welcome to the Cardiff Referee Society's presentation for grassroots referees. The focus of the presentation is on correctly identifying fouls and game management. We'll also look at the positioning of the referee to help with uh, making the correct decision. The law we will be looking at is Law 12, Fouls and Misconduct. Fouls can take many different forms during the game and the law identifies seven types where a direct free kick or a penalty can be awarded. The severity of those challenges will lead to the referee applying an additional sanction. The referee has to decide if the challenge is careless, where a lack of attention is applied by the player when making a challenge, reckless is when the player acts without regard to the safety of the opponent, or excessive force, this is where the player exceeds the amount of force necessary uh, when playing the ball. When the referee is judging a challenge and a type of sanction to apply, the referee needs to consider a number of additional factors. The position of the ball is important since it needs to be in the picture, so to speak. It should be pointed out, however, that uh, simply winning the ball is not enough to avoid the sanction. The speed or the intensity of the challenge. High speed challenges for the ball bring a number of risks to the opponent in terms of serious injury, the player making a tackle must be in control of his motion. Point of contact, where the tackling player makes contact with the opponent also needs to be considered. Challenges on the foot are totally different to tackles on the ankle, Achilles, shin or anywhere else on the upper part of the leg. The tackling player must also ensure that his trailing leg also doesn't make serious contact. The idea of purely winning a ball isn't enough. Intent or malice is difficult to uh, attribute or define because the referee is not able to read minds. The referee, however, can assess body language to determine a player's intent on injuring or hurting a player in a challenge. To put the theory into practice, here are a number of clips in which I'll add a comment when necessary on the position of the referee game management and the correct uh, sanction. Most of the clips uh, were taken using a mobile phone which explains the quality but at least it gives that, that grassroots feel to the actual uh, to the game. So here goes. When making the tackle the defender has a straight leg. Um, he almost overreaches in a challenge and makes contact with the foot of the attacker. He claims to have won the ball which isn't enough of a defence. For me, uh, this is a definite yellow card and even borders on a red card because of the excessive force gained from the straight leg. In this clip, the referee is in a bad position. The best position would be more central and uh, nearer to the 18 yard line, near the body of players. It is difficult to see from the clip, but it is a definite yellow card, uh, free kick and penalty if inside the box. Uh, if the goalkeeper made contact with the um, Achilles area or the calf area, then a possible red card offence. Uh. In this clip, the green player is late in the challenge and makes contact with the foot of the attacker. The player is in control in the tackle and uh, it can re be regarded as being reckless and the yellow card should be uh, issued. In this clip, the red player is committed to make a challenge, a big challenge actually for the ball, and totally mistimes it. The red player doesn't consider the safety of the opponent, the tackle is reckless and deserves a yellow. If the referee considers that the, the amount of force in the challenge, then uh, it can possibly even be a red. A horrible, horrible challenge and definitely a red card without a shadow of a doubt. In terms of management, the referee hasn't dealt with this situation well. The whistle was late and the tone was very weak. The referee was also late to arrive at, to the scene. The offending player was just standing around waiting for some sort of action. He was then surrounded by the opposition, which led to a further confrontation, possibly a headbutt, another red card. So, you know, if I was the referee in that situation, or if you were the referee, then the tone of the whistle makes a massive difference. A really loud blast to show your displeasure. And the referee should be brandishing the card immediately to, this, to defuse the situation. In this clip, the first thing to notice is the teams with similar colour kit. The referee shouldn't have started the game because of the clash. The offending player lunges at the attacker and brings him down. A definite yellow card. 
for the reckless challenge. There's a lot going on in this clip. Uh, white number four brings down orange seven. The challenge itself is a reckless tackle. The referee plays his advantage and the attacking player has a lot to do. So having possession is not always an advantage. So the referee was better off stopping play at that point. The two players come together and have a verbal exchange. The referee needs to be going towards them, trying to defuse the situation rather than walking away and expecting the player to follow. In this clip, the defending player steps into the path of the attacker, causing him to collide and fly into the air. The defender, Green 7, does not play the ball and plays the attacker instead. The attacker could have potentially landed on his head or neck, causing a serious injury. In my opinion, a red card should be issued. Some referees, however, might see this as being harsh, but uh, the contact made by the defender was designed to injure. In this clip, Green 7 is very late in a challenge and takes out Blue 20. The referee is close by and immediately issues a caution. A red card could also be considered since the challenge has the potential to cause serious injury due to the speed and the point of contact. There was also a degree of malice because uh, the Green 7 was late and continued with the challenge despite the ball not being there to be played. In this clip, the orange player is in control when making the challenge. However, contact is made on the ankle. If the referee had the view of the camera, then a red card would be issued However, from the other side, it would look as if the contact was made on the foot and a yellow card would be issued. The player in black jumps in the air to make a challenge and fortunately doesn't make direct contact with the player. This is a definite red card offence. The referee decides to play advantage, which is not advisable in this situation since there is no direct benefit, only negatives. In this clip, the blue player fails to retreat to the required distance, which is a cautionable offence. The attacker then decides to throw the ball into his face using excessive force, uh, which is a red card offence. The referee could have managed the situation by blowing his whistle, asking him to retreat, to retreat, and if the player refused to do so, then stop play and then to issue the caution to the blue player. But by leaving it uh, as it is, then the player just reacted in the way they did and the referee has to take actions to uh, rectify the whole situation. That concludes the presentation. Hope that you found it to be useful and uh, please subscribe to the channel and like this video.